Would you turn to the book of Exodus chapter 29? It's good to hear the pages crisp. I mean turning on Sunday morning. <laughs> Exodus 29 and verse 38. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me? Now this is what you shall offer on the altar. Two lambs of the first year. Day by day continually. That means consistently. One lamb you shall offer in the morning. The other lamb you shall offer at twilight. With the one lamb shall be one tenth of an ephah of flour. Mixed with one fourth of a hen of pressed oil. And one fourth of a hen of wine. As a drink offering. And the other lamb you shall offer at twilight. You shall offer with it the grain offering and the drink offering. As in the morning for a sweet aroma. An offering made by fire to the Lord. This shall be what? A continual burnt offering throughout your generations. At the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord. Where I will meet you to speak with you. And there I will meet with the children of Israel. And the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. So I will consecrate the tabernacle of meeting and the altar. I will also consecrate both Aaron and his sons to minister to me as priests. I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of the land of Egypt. The word Egypt means world, carnality. That I may dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. Now this is very powerful because there's something very important about this. And, there, and, and what it is is that this shall be a continual burnt offering. And what he is talking about, a continual burnt offering, is the word consistency. Consistency. In other words, if you're willing to be consistent in the things that God has appointed you to do, there's a place where he will speak, dwell, meet your needs, and put you in protection. That's where we cooperate with God. But there's got to be a place of consistency. Is everybody with me? So the word continual is a representation of to be consistent. Turn to Psalm 34. So we know that there is a fruit. There is a reward of being consistent, isn't there? In Psalm 34. In verse 1. Psalm 34. In verse 1. Are you with me? Let's read it. I will bless the Lord at all times. Wow. Does that mean consistent? His praise shall what? Continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. See, if praise is continually in your mouth, that means you're making connection with the other side. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. See, when people begin to Backsliding begins in the area of the mouth. When you begin to backslide in the mouth, you've already begun to backslide. And the next thing is disaster. You fall into temptations and everything else. Why? Because your connection to the other side is made through your mouth. So we must continually, that means to be consistent consistent so you'd be walking in a store you go hallelujah everybody looks at you you're like you're nuts but they're nuts because they're not doing it <laughs> i'm crazy about jesus <laughs> but you're nuts over the devil you know forget that because <laughs> he calls you be crazy man now in this that consistency is so vital because we know that if you're consistent you're disciplined and if you're disciplined you're consistent and a disciple in that word discipline is disciple so we must maintain this arena and constantly be conscious of this area of consistently, no matter what it is. He says that it's going to always, if you, in other words, just like in Exodus, what we just read about that consistent sacrifice, where you are walking in a consistent sacrifice of yourself. Why? Because you're denying yourself. So that's a consistent sacrifice, isn't it? By being consistent in all things, you're going to hear the voice of God. God will dwell with you and he'll meet your needs and protect you. Amen. He'll visit you if you're consistent. 
So he says, and, and what we just read here, he says, all right, so there's something we need to do. We need to keep consistent praise. Why? Because it's constantly making connection to the other side. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119 and verse something. Is everybody there? <laughs> uh, verse 41. Would you read it with me? 41. Let your mercies come also to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So I shall have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. And take not word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in your ordinances. So shall I keep your law, what? Continually. The law here is in what God is speaking to you on what to do daily. So I will keep your law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty. I will seek your precepts. And I will what? Speak of your testimonies also before kings. I will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love. I will meditate on your statutes. So we see here that in this, there's an area of consistency, isn't there? consistency we consistently keep his law in other words he will consistently be willing to hear when god speaks so you're consistently willing to hear go to hosea 12 hosea 12 verse 5 that is the lord of hosts the lord is his memorable name so you, by the help of your God, return. Observe mercy and justice and wait on your God when? Continually. So you shall wait on the Lord consistently. In other words, you don't do anything. When you don't know what to do, you don't do it. You just wait. Now, what does a waiter do? He serves. So while you're waiting, on the listen, there's a lot of things I'm still waiting on. You know, but in the meantime, I'm still doing what I've been told to do. Yeah, some of it is killing me, but I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> Colossians 4. So we're to continually praise. We're continually listen, continually wait. I guess that equals continually die, you know. In Colossians 4, in verse 1. Masters, give your bondservants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Continue earnestly in what? Prayer. Being vigilant in it with what? Thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God will open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. So there's something else we're to be consistent in. What is it? Prayer. Prayer. Go to Acts 2. Acts chapter 2. It's just for you. Acts 2, verse 40. Is everybody there? Let's read it. And with many other words... He testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they what? Continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Oh, now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and had favor with all men. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So we see here something very important, that they were continuous. They were consistent in doctrine. They were consistent in fellowship. 
Everyone say fellowship. And all of their needs were met. They were in one accord. You know, one of the things the devil wants to do is remove individuals from fellowship. In other words, you, you realize how many times that people miss things because they're not in fellowship. Because they miss Bible study. Because they, they miss the worship. They miss the anointing. They miss, you know, one of the things that, the, and, and in that, the individuals are always in trying to get in a catch-up mode and don't even realize it. When we got the mustard seed mode. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We don't want the ketchup mode. We want the mustard seed mode. That's faith, isn't it? So we must be consistent in fellowship. Go to Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Verse 21. Verse 21, and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If, hello, if means if you'll do this, he'll do that. If you, if indeed you what? Continue. What's the word continue mean? Consistent in faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, have become a minister. So we see here, this is powerful, because we must be consistent in faith. And what is faith? It is spiritual sight. In other words, you are consistent in faith by not relying on what you see, by what the Spirit is showing you. Consistency. And people wonder why they backslide. Because they're not consistent. You know, the devil, and if, even the word tells us that the devil seeks out whom he can devour, right? And what does he try to do? He tries to get a sheep to move away from the flock. To devour. Hebrew. 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 13. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Would you read it with me? Let brotherly love what? Let brotherly what? Love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained what? Angels. Whoa. Remember the prisoners is, if chained with them, those who are mistreated since you yourselves are in the body also. Marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Let your conduct be without what? Covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can boneheads do to me? What can man do to me? <laughs> so there must be a consistency of brotherly love. Now, I want to share something with you. Uh, I didn't. He said brotherly love. In other words, you're to love everyone. Now you might not like them, but you gotta love them. Hello. James chapter one, verse twenty-two. James one twenty-two. <laughs> Is everybody there? Let's read it together. But he, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the what? Perfect law of liberty continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. So there's an area where we must be consistent in the law of of the Spirit. In the what? Law of the Spirit. Now I'm going to show with you what the law of the Spirit is. Go to Romans 8. In Romans 8, verse 1. Be consistent in the law of the Spirit. Would you read it with me? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. 
For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but what? According to the Spirit. So you are fulfilling the law of the Spirit by walking in the Spirit. Has everybody got it? And we must continually walk in the Spirit. 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Do not neg neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. How many of y'all know everybody knows when you're pro progressing, when you're standing fast, when you're moving forward? How many of y'all know that they all know when you're going backwards? Hello. Everybody okay? <laughs> Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine and what? Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who what? Hear you. Oh, so the way to save yourself and those who hear you is to be what? Consistent. Why? Because we're to be the example, aren't we? To be consistent. You know, reason and justification and compromise and complacency is not of God. And that's what the devil uses to infiltrate our peanut brain to try to cause us to walk in the mind of the flesh instead of the mind of Christ. But the mind of Christ is obedient to the things of the Spirit, and the mind of flesh is obedient to the things of the flesh. So in this, the enemy is going to try to deceive you in every area to prevent you to compromise, be complacent, to avoid that consistency that is so needed as an example and witness of Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. <laughs> and verse 12. Yes! And, uh, and all who desire, say desire, to live godly in Christ Jesus will what? Suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse. That's powerful. Evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse. Deceiving and what? Being deceived. Man, I'd like to send this out to a bunch of people. <laughs> but you must what? You must what? And what does that mean to be what? Consistent. In the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Wow. Continue to what you have learned. Now, there's something very important here. Because there's two connections here. There's a connection between here. There's a key to consistency. And, and he says it right here that, yes, and all you who desire to live godly. Well, if you have a desire to live godly, that means you have a desire to please God. And the key to consistency is to please God. It's, it's the desire that you, please, that you have to please God. If you are consistent... You have a desire to please God. If you're inconsistent, you still are plain TD totter in the area of pleasing God and pleasing yourself. Are you listening? So you do the things that are convenient for you instead of doing the things that please God. And that is the key to consistency. Is everybody okay? Go to 1 John chapter 2. What is the key to consistency? The desire to please God. Verse 18. First John chapter 2 and verse 18. Is everybody there? Little children, it is the what? 
last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now there are many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have what? Continued. They'd have been what? Consistent. So what moved them out? Inconsistency. Yes. But they went out that they might be made what? Manifest. That none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know this stuff, man. The whole thing is, is to be consistent. They lost the desire to please God and replace it with the pleasing of self. Feelings and carnal desires. 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we what? Urge and exalt in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk into what? Please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanliness, but what? But holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who also has given us his Holy Spirit. Wow. Pleasing him. See, when you lose the desire to please Him, you walk away from consistency. 1 John chapter 3. Verse 22. <laughs> Come on, read it with me. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandments now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him and by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us see one of the things that we want to hear is the Lord saying this is my child in whom I'm well pleased why because your desire is to please Him. Again, the key to consistency is the desire to please God. So you don't put yourself first. You put Him first. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We are honored and blessed to hear this Word today that is brought forth from Your throne room by Your Spirit and revelation confirmation to be manifested through each and every one of us here today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah.